Problem number 98 says, on a scale that measures the intensity of a certain phenomenon, so there's a scale, a reading of n plus 1, a reading of n plus 1 corresponds to a reading of n. So there's a, it corresponds to n. On that scale, uh, corresponds to an intensity that is 10 times the intensity according to the reading of n. So n is, n plus 1 is the same as 10 times n. Okay. And they say the intensity corresponding to a reading of 8 is how many times uh, how many times 3? So if n were 3. The way to think about this is 8 is 3 plus what? 3 plus 5. So 4 would be 3 plus 1. 5 would be 3 plus 2. Or 3 plus 1 plus 1. And 8 would be 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. There are five ones here. We know that every time n is added to 1, it's being multiplied by 10. So if you're going to be adding five individual ones, you're going to be multiplying it 10, uh, multiplying it by 10 five times. And that just happens to be answer choice C. On to number 99, which says, for the positive numbers n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 4, and n plus 8, the mean is how much greater than the median? Mean minus median. All right. Let's, uh, let's plug in some numbers. Uh, let's imagine n equals 1. We're just picking 1 because 1 is a very small number and easy to compute. That would be 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 and 3 and 5 and 9. So let's ignore this and let's pretend that these are our values now. Okay, the mean and the median. Median is going to be 3. What's the mean? The mean, you add these up and you divide by 5 and you get 20 over 5 is 4. So basically they're asking what is 4 minus 3, 3 being the median. And that's just 1. And that's answer choice B. On to problem 100. Man, I can't believe we've done 100 of these problems. T equals 5 over 9 times K minus 32. And they give us T equals 290. Okay, first step is to cross multiply. 9t equals 5, uh, let's multiply here too. 5k minus 5 times 32 is uh, 160. Then we plug in t equals 290 here. We got 9 times 290 equals 5k minus 160. Twenty eight ten is that right? Zero eighty one. Oh no, it's twenty six ten. Ah, caught that. Okay, equals five k minus one sixty. Add the one sixty to both sides, and you get two seven seven zero equals five k. That being crossed out. 2770. That goes into 5 goes into 27 5 times. 27 again. 4. Okay, so 554 five, is that one of the answer choices? I believe it is. It is answer choice D. Problem 101. The water from one outlet flowing at a constant rate can fill a swimming pool in nine hours. So, one swimming pool in nine hours. Another outlet flowing at a constant rate can fill the same pool in five hours. So this other outlet fills one pool in five hours. 
if these outlets are used at the same time, approximately what is the number of hours required to fill the pool? So if they're used at the same time, we're going to add these two rates together. And we know they're filling one pool still, but we're looking to see how long it's going to take. What are the number of hours? So once we've set up this equation, let's just solve for x. 45, 9 plus 5 is 14 equals 1 over x. That's the same as 14 over, or 14 uh, and 45. That we got here by basically cross multiplying to get 14x equals 45. Skip the set there, okay. And then we're solving for x, so that's why we uh, do that. Anyway, now we're here. It goes into it three times. 42, 30. If 14 is 15, it'd be roughly two times. So 3.2, the closest answer choice is going to be D, which is 3.21. But because the question said approximately, we know that we can estimate. On to 102, which says if a square mirror has a 20 inch diagonal, so 20 inch diagonal, what is the approximate perimeter of the mirror in inches? Okay, so we know it's a square, so we know that all the sides are gonna be the same. The perimeter is going to be the four lengths added together. So 4x is going to be the perimeter, and it's also going to be what we're looking for. Now let's solve this with the Pythagorean theorem, which states that side 1 squared plus side, side 2 squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared. So we know that x squared plus x squared equals 20 squared, which is 400. 2x squared equals 400, and x squared equals 200. We take the square root of that, and we get x equals square root of 200. But well, remember that we're looking for 4x. So let's multiply both sides by 4. 4x equals 4 times 200. And that's going to be your answer. However, in the answer choices, they give us a equals 5, b equals 8, c equals 10, etc., etc. So, hmm, how do we figure this out? Okay, well, we know 200, square root of 200 is approximately what? Uh, I think... 14 times 14 is going to be 196, which is very close to 200. So let's just guesstimate and say that it's 4 times 14. 4 times 4 is 615, 96. Is that right? No, I think I... Made a computational error here. Okay, so 14, 4, 56, of course. So 56 is the closest to either A or B. A is 40, B is 60. 56 is definitely closer to 60. So the answer is going to be B. Problem 103. The present ratio of students to teachers at a certain school is 30 to 1. If the student enrollment were to increase by 50 students, the so students plus 50, uh, and this ratio of students, no, uh, and the number of teachers were to increase by 5, teachers by 5, then the ratio would be 25 to 1. What is the approximate, what is the present number of teachers? So teachers, that's what we're looking for. Cross multiply, always the first thing you do. S equals 30T. On this side, we have S plus 50 equals 25T plus 125. Hmm, okay. We know S equals 30T. Let's just plug that in to the second equation. To get... 30t plus 50 equals 25t plus 125. Simply subtract 25 from both sides. 
we get 5t on this side. Subtract 50 from both sides, and we get uh, 75. t equals 575. t equals 15. That is answer choice E. On to 104. 104 says, what is the smallest integer n? So, n smallest. For which 25n is greater than 5 over 12, or 5 to the 12th power. How many times does 5 go into 25? 5 times 5 equals 25, two times. So 25 of, to the nth power is the same as saying 5 to the 5 squared uh, times n over 5 uh, to the 12th power. And that's the same as saying 5 to n over 5 12th. And that's the same as saying simply 2n greater than 12. Hmm. So now we have to basically max it, or is it maximize or minimize? We're going to be minimizing n. We're looking for the smallest value of n that makes this true. If n were 6, this would be 12. Hmm. Let's see, if n were 6, this would be 12, and it would be 12 greater than 12. Well, that's not true. If n were 7, this would be 14 greater than 12, and that would be true. So 7 is going to be your answer, and that is answer choice B. All right, I am all out of room, so... I will continue this in the next video, and in the next video we're going to be looking at another problem that requires a matrix. Uh, those are very easy, but it's never a bad idea to keep doing those matrices, to keep making those matrices. Anyway, join me in the next video.